I'll share with a story because I think the best is to let people know that how I came across this next one. Uh, any idea which, uh, what is this? 71. This is a Kashmiri refugee camp. I was working there and uh, uh, my wife is also here and we used to both uh, go to the camps to work with the trauma of the people. And uh, there were a number of camps and we were, we had distributed our work. We used to uh, go to the camp, discuss the symptoms people felt. Most of them could not sleep. Most of them had uh, nightmares. Most of them had many symptoms. We used to discuss this, help them with exercises, talks to heal and then come back. One day while coming out, there was this man, an old Kashmiri gentleman wearing a firin. He looked very elegant. He came to us and said, why do you come here? So I said, I come here because uh, I want to work with the trauma of the Kashmiri people. So he smiled, looked at me and said, do you understand our trauma? So I said, now where is this conversation going? I don't want it to go in the way he's taking it. So I said, look, I'm, we are trying to understand. We, he says, what is, your what is the response of the people to your workshops? I said, uh, it is not very good, it's modest. People come, they sit, they listen, they go away. Then he again repeated his question. Do you understand our trauma? I said, well, I'm trying, but if you can suggest something I can do, he pointed his finger at the camp and we were at a slight elevation and said, do you know what this camp is called? I said, Mutti camp? He says, no. Do you know what do we call it? I said, what? He said, we call it Aurangzeb's dream. So I was taken aback. I said, uh, Aurangzeb's dream? He said, yes, we call it Aurangzeb's dream. And do you understand why? I said, no, but he said, then go and search. When you understand why we call it, then probably you will get a better response from people. Now to a Western trained mind like me, it was quite uh, frankly insult. Okay, here is this person telling me that, uh, you know, I, but anyway, I went back. I started studying about Aurangzeb. I had vaguely known him as someone who was anti-Hindu, who was fanatic, this and that, nothing more than that. But I was curious to find out that why a, a school teacher came up to me pointing at the camp of Kashmiri Pandits and said this is called Aurangzeb's dream. I studied about Aurangzeb. I discovered that in uh, almost 300 years ago, Aurang, somebody had told Aurangzeb that if you can convert the Kashmiri uh, Pandits to Islam, the whole of India will convert. So if you can con convert Kashmir to Islam, the whole of India will follow through. So hearing that, he had asked his governor that convert all these people and don't care about the methods. And then those people, they went uh, along with Pandit Kriparam, who was a prominent Kashmiri leader, to the ninth uh, Guru, Guru Tegh Bahadur, and asked him for support, saying that he's trying to destroy us and, uh, you know, can you help us? So Guru Tegh Bahadur decided to sacrifice himself. He went to Aurangzeb. There was a dialogue between both of them. He refused to convert despite being threatened and Aurangzeb ultimately killed him and his people and uh, he could not convert him. So uh, he got saved. The Hinduism as uh, we understand as a religion, many people say that they got saved because of that. I was very touched when I read this. When I went back again to the camp, the group was sitting there and I told them that I have studied about Aurangzeb, I understand what he... And suddenly I noticed a change in the group. This, they, I could see that they had become alive. They felt that we were connecting with each other. He says, Aap hume samaj rahe hai. They said in Kashmiri. And a whole lot of disclosure followed. People started talking about themselves like never before. 
some of the women came forward and said that we were sexually assaulted, which we could never talk about. Things changed. It taught me a very important lesson that I had been in my life seeing trauma as a group of psychological symptoms. But now I began to understand trauma as also having a historical component, a historical nature. And since then, whenever I have worked all across the world, I have found that trauma has to be understood in its historical context.